Hello and welcome to Last Chess Week. Tonight my name is Fiona Steilantony and I'm your host um, this week and every week. <laughs> and I has the show on in the background, I think. <laughs> and so he's already on the call. It is, of course, the one and only um, Grandmaster David Howell. So let's bring David on. David! Hi Fiona, no have I done something to, wrong already? No, no need to look so mortified. I could see you from the corner of my eye checking out the show, <laughs> hearing myself oh. introducing the show. Oh really? I muted you though, I didn't realise. Uh, sorry. Then, then maybe it <laughs> I'm not very good myself. at this text, so. So basically, we've both had tech issues, uh, but I think we are live. I see some people in the chat. Uh, so Hagami, Pandora's box, hallelujah, cat. I have everything open. I have the, the YouTube chat open. I have Chess24 open. So I see Super Rico in Chess24. I see Andrew Roberts in YouTube, and I see you guys uh, in Twitch. So welcome, everyone. And David. A special welcome to you. How are you on this fine day after your 30th birthday? Yeah, hi Fiona. Hi everyone. I'm good. I'm very good. I have been in quarantine for 10 days though, and it's been a while since I've properly spoken to people. <laughs> so apologies in advance if I end up talking gibberish, if I uh, stumble across my words, you know, all that stuff. Uh, and I am an old man now, officially. Officially. So, um, <laughs> that's, that's my excuse if I say anything too bad. <laughs> so let's bring up uh, this second screen. Why are you a yellow box? This is my fault. Let me replace the yellow box with your actual face. There we are. Um, so I have prepared uh, these few tweets. The first time I've pulled up one of my own tweets to once again extend my my birthday wishes and welcome you to the 30th club. And I have also, you mentioned your quarantine, pulled up uh, the tweet by Leon Watson, who's always in the know of what's going on uh, behind the scenes, especially within Chess24 and the group. And he's saying, I can tell you David Howell is spending his birthday quarantined in a hotel room because we at Chess24 made him. But it's for a great reason. So David, spill the beans. Where are you quarantining and why? Um, I'm quarantining at the North Pole because I'm training to be the next Santa Claus. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I'm actually in Oslo right now. I'm very lucky. I'm right in the center of Oslo. I wish I could show you out my window. Great view. Um, but I'm here for a very exciting reason, and it's because I'll be helping to present one of the broadcasts for this Champions Chess Tour that is coming up soon. And yeah, it's a great honour, as you can probably tell, but I can't wait to get started. <laughs> it's going to yeah, be, yeah, it's gonna go be it, a but... fantastic, no, sorry to have interrupted you, it's going to be a fantastic event that kicks off in exactly, I think, one week from now, next Sunday? That's right, round one next Sunday. And your quarantine, um, today is your last day, I believe, of quarantine. Is that correct? That's right. Freedom tomorrow. Freedom. I'm finally allowed to talk to people. Finally allowed to run down the streets. Finally allowed to what get have... out of this smelly hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to? I mean, I was in quarantine in Norway last month uh, before, the, um, before the Norway chess. Uh, but I was, since we were on the countryside, I don't know how it was for you if you, I was allowed to go out for walks, but tell me, what have you been up to in these 10 days, 10 days of quarantine? Yeah, so I'm, I'm very lucky. I have been allowed to go to the supermarket. I have been allowed to go for a, a short walk every day. Um, I'm not allowed to go near people, so I'm always keeping my distance. <laughs> don't want to break the law. But uh, yeah, I've been trying to keep busy. Obviously, yesterday was a big day for me, uh, this 30 milestone and I was very lucky I had some friends including you Fiona uh, we had a bit of a game night on zoom a bit of a virtual party um, other than that I've been doing some press ups trying to get ready for this chess uh, champions chess tour broadcast um, I, it's, I think it's going to be broadcast on Eurosport so uh, it's a great chance for chess to make a great impression and 
hopefully I can be part of that. And yeah, I've just been in training mode, training mode really. For once, not not for a chess tournament myself, but uh, for a slightly different role. <laughs> oh, training we are also this. we are also uh, being joined in the chat by Adam Hunt. Adam, it's great to have you. And he says that uh, you have been inspiring young chess players with your words of wisdom. <laughs> hey, Adam. Yeah, actually, we were both doing some teaching earlier today. So, um, again, that's another reason I'm probably a bit disheveled and... <laughs> I know, uh, I mean, probably... yes, yesterday was a busy day for you with your 30th, as you said, we were playing games last night, and then today I think you were working all day, pretty much. Yeah, working nine to five. Uh, <laughs> I nearly sang that line out loud, but um, yeah, it's been a long, long day. And um, yeah, yesterday, actually, um, as you know, Fiona, we had a few games, a few drinks. And well, I had literally half a glass of champagne and I woke up this morning for the teaching. And oh, my God. Yeah. Old age. It's really caught up with me. My back was aching. I could barely stand up. It's <laughs> sad times. I'm glad you got rid of the old photos, though, because oh, I look so skinny a few years back. Well, I thought, first of all, I have to plug, I know you always want to plug your Instagram, so that's what we're going to do. We're yes. going to simultaneously plug your Instagram, so make sure to follow David at David Howard Chess <laughs> on Instagram. And you uploaded you. this photo today, so although you were in quarantine uh, in Oslo, that didn't stop you from... Uh, celebrating your birthday in style. It looks like quite a few people tracked you down and sent you some gifts and cards, flowers, champagne, yeah. chocolates. <laughs> I actually went to the shop and bought it all for myself and just pretended I have friends. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, um, yeah, I'm very lucky. I know some great people. And the biggest surprise was um, getting a present. Well, I got a knock on my door and it was the hotel staff. And um, a friend of mine from university, I didn't even tell her where I was staying, so it was a bit creepy. <laughs> but she'd, she'd tracked me down. Apparently, I sent a photo out of my window, and she went on Google Maps and figured out which hotel I was staying in. That is uh, incredible. So, yeah, so she could send a box of chocolates. So that was very, very nice. Um, but yeah, go follow me on Instagram. I post about once every year, so <laughs> it's definitely worth it. <laughs> Instagram, and of course, under your camera, uh, follow him on Twitter as well, David Howell GM. David, before we talk about the, the Champions Chess Tour, which is starting in a week, I just saw, I mean, every week with every guest, I have had to, I cannot escape the, the Queen's Gambit hype. Um, it is everywhere. When I when I scroll Facebook, when I scroll Twitter, when I scroll Instagram these days, it's absolutely everywhere. And of course, I didn't know this, but of course, you also talked. Um, I don't know if you talked to them or if you wrote something, but tell us about this, about this uh, piece in the Times about uh, the Queen's Gambit. That's right. So um, I did have a little chat on uh, Monday, last Monday, uh, to Dominic Maxwell, who writes for the Times, who writes for the art section. Um, he's a yeah, he's a critic, reviewer, and yeah, we had a nice little chat about chess. I think he said, you know, it's the common story. He played when he was young, and then he yeah, for many years he didn't play, but suddenly he's kind of he enjoyed the show. He got into it. Uh, he's been playing chess with his kid and yeah we had a chat it was a really great news article in the times for anyone who subscribes times online go check it out it was on friday um and yeah he he interviewed myself yvanka huska uh, who we might talk about a bit later is also part of the champions chess tour um and yeah we we shared our thoughts on the program i really enjoyed it myself i wrote a small piece in the times just about the specifically the chess stuff in it some of the chess games and yeah i thought it was I mean, relatively well done, as probably as good a job as anyone could do on chess. Did you watch uh, who it? Who isn't all? from this world? Uh, I may or may not have fallen asleep <laughs> in the penultimate episode a few days ago, but um, let's let's pretend I've watched it all. <laughs> if anyone who's read the Times article asks, I've watched it all. <laughs> how did you enjoy the episodes you have seen so far, and how much do you think the show does justice to real life real life chess? chess events and chess in general? Um, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I mean, I think it does decent justice. Obviously, everything is exaggerated a bit. Um, you know, the the tension. Of course, there's tension during chess events, but I'm not sure I've ever 
um, stared at my opponents as much as some of these guys stared at their opponents. Um, and the the pace of the games is obviously very quick. And I haven't really seen Beth, you know, knuckle down there and really study for 12 hours every day, like some chess pros probably <laughs> do and would have done back in those days. But apart from that, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. And my favorite character is Benny, just because I'd like to think I'm that cool as well. But, I uh, know, yeah. actually today, <laughs> this morning, I was so tilted. I saw Jennifer Shahadi, who was my guest here just a couple of weeks ago. She had a poll on her Twitter. Who would you most like to teach? Who would you like to be your teacher to learn chess from? And the options were Beth, Benny, uh, I've already, uh, <laughs> Scheibel and uh, Borgov. And actually, of course, I wanted to vote Benny, but I fat fingered it and, and voted Beth. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <damn> Benny. <laughs> Benny's the coolest. But actually, the show is, I, I mean, OK, I've only had a small um, glimpse into this, but as far as I can tell, it's had a great, like, a big impression just on the general population. Like some of my old, like, old school friends, old university friends, they've already been in touch saying, actually, they've just bought a chessboard. They've been playing with their partners. Um, I guess there's not much else to do in lockdown. Um, but yeah, they really enjoyed the show. And even one of my students, a young girl, she and uh, I think that Adam knows her. Um, she's, I think, just finished watching it and she seems to feel inspired by it as well. So yeah, it's. I think it's only a good thing. Yeah, I saw thing. today that Sarah Longson has talked to, I think, to The Guardian about the show. And she was saying, which I thought was a very interesting point, that hopefully one of the the long-term benefits of the Queen's Gambit that, is that it will show, uh, is that it will get more girls to, to play chess in the long run. And I very much hope so. But yeah, I, I don't think I've seen a hype quite like this one uh, before. So uh, very excited for what's to come. And, and I will move on now because I still have, I'm going to talk about the show one more time later with my second guest, Ingvar, who has also made a whole series about the show. So, so let's move on. But good to know that you liked it. Meanwhile, there is a few people uh, in the chat wishing you a happy birthday and some want to know when will you uh, be back back to blitzing on Chess24 again? Ah. Uh. Hi everyone, thanks for the birthday wishes. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've banned to blitz on Chess24. Um, I really enjoy it as well. I don't know why I, why I stopped really. Um, I'll be back soon, I'll be back soon. Um, actually after this Champions Chess Tour, after the first event, um, after the Skilling Open, I will have some free time on my hands, probably from this room. You'll recognize the wallpaper. <laughs> I promise I'll do a banter blitz. Um, as long as Chess24 want me, I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, I, I need to play some Blitz again. Actually, uh, I, I stopped playing for, well, I still play a bit like friendly games, but I stopped playing Blitz for two, three months until last night and Fiona tricked me into playing Blitz. So um, yeah. I, did you enjoy it? <laughs> I did enjoy it, but I felt a bit rusty. And I'm sure after, after commentating on the Skilling Open, I'll be inspired to play a bit more. So you'll all get a chance to beat me, don't worry. <laughs> So let's talk about the skilling open. I have pulled up some uh, some info sheet courtesy of Chess24. Um, so basically here you get a bit of an overview. We talked about it. It starts in one week exactly. You will be commentating. Um, we'll talk about the broadcast in a second. I am curious to hear all about it. It will be a brand new show. Uh, the format is slightly different. So a bit shorter, nine uh, days, no rest days, 16 players a three-day uh, rapid qualifier. The time control remains the same and most of the rest, the price fund has been increased. Um, so it promises, I think it will make for a very exciting show. Uh, tell us how do you look forward to the tournament and tell us a bit um, how, uh, how it will be like or what do you already know or what can you already reveal about this brand new show uh, in Oslo? Yeah, so I'm not sure how much I can reveal, actually. I'm not sure how much I know, even. Um, actually, because my quarantine has been on um, for the last 10 days, tomorrow is my first day. I'll be checking out the studio. I'll be meeting my co-presenters. Um, I think I'm allowed to say who they are. <laughs> so they'll be Yovanka Hus. And um, yeah, so... Uh, so can you just repeat it? I, I think I broke up for a second. So just when you said the names, it broke up. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I should have used some fake names now. Oh, 
Um, so that my two co-presenters will be Kaya Snare and Yvanka Huska. And the three of us, yeah, will be breaking things down um, day by day. We'll be in a proper studio. I, it will be much better quality than this <laughs> webcam I have here. <laughs> Sorry about the lighting. I couldn't figure out how to attach the Hotel lights. Hotel rooms are tough to stream from. I'm speaking from experience, so I know, I know how tough it is. Exactly. Especially when you're a tech, uh, tech noob <laughs> like me. Um, but yeah, I, we've put, I mean, Ch uh, Chess24, Play Magnus, everyone, they've put in so much preparation and hard work into this and I'm very excited. I think it's going to be one of the best broadcasts out there, hopefully. I'm uh, sure um, looking forward to seeing it. So <laughs> tomorrow... Know, unless, I, unless I ruin it, which I probably will. <laughs> but <laughs> no, I'll try my best and it, I hope you guys all tune in from the 22nd. It will be very exciting. Yeah. Do you already know where we will be able to see your show or will we have to wait and find out? Let me actually pull up this. Um, since Eurosport did announce, I'll pull up the Eurosport announcement as well as the players list so far. So will we be able it's, uh, to see you on Eurosport? How will this work? As far as I know, it will be on Eurosport. That's right. Um, I think it will also be on Chess24, um, on Twitch, on YouTube. So you guys can watch us the usual way. Um, yeah, the Eurosports uh, angle, I mean, it's going to come to an amazing audience. I mean, there'll be so many people watching for, on Eurosport and it's a chance. It's like a unique chance for chess to uh, really, well, yeah, just spread in popularity and hopefully we can make it really exciting um, so people who are used to watching other sports can enjoy chess just as much. And I think that's the angle we're going for. Um, we're going to try to appeal to everyone, make it really understand, like um, easy to understand and um, yeah, I think that's my job to break down the chess side of things in a way that, you know, it's not just it's not just all moves, not just all variations. Um, I'm going to try and put my put myself in the player's shoes and try and think what they're thinking and try and explain that. Um, that I mean, that field there that you've just pulled up, I mean, that's extremely strong. And I, I'm sure it's going to get even stronger with the last <laughs> five players to be announced. Uh, um, they haven't even they haven't even told me who's playing. So. <laughs> So let's talk about, actually, just before we talk about who's playing, let's talk about it. I think it's so interesting what you're saying, you know, now with, with Eurosport and trying to, to reach a new audience. And actually, on the first last chess week tonight, which took place right after Norway chess concluded, um, I was joined by, by our good friend uh, Niels Grandelius, who was, you know, uh, working for TV2 um, at the Norway chess event. And it really is. I think so different because you and I have done commentary even together, but it's always so chess um, focused and you're talking to people who, who understand chess. So have you have you given any thought to how you want to approach it or how how do you feel about talking to a whole new audience? Yeah, I'm no, I'm excited to bring chess to a new audience. I mean, obviously, I'm a bit nervous as well because I'm used to discussing chess maybe with other grandmasters analyzing some games and um, we kind of get caught up very much in, we just assume uh, each other knows kind of the chess lingo, the the slang and all the, uh, all the coordinates, everything. So it's going to be a challenge, but I've been watching lots of YouTube videos. I've been pointed in the direction of some people who are very good at explaining um, chess in a really kind of uh, universal way. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take on the challenge and hopefully I can do a decent job. But I think um, I think it will also be broadcast in a few other languages, which is great um, for people around Europe, around the rest of the world. Yeah, absolutely. So also people can read up uh, if you just head to the Chess24 uh, homepage. You cannot click the whole link here, but it's in one of the latest news articles. You will find all about uh, the deal that has been signed with Eurosport, also with some quotes from people from Eurosport. It will be broadcast, uh, from what I understand, uh, in Europe and in Asia. So yeah, looking like it's going to be able to reach a huge audience. And I think very exciting times uh, ahead for the, the chess world. David, you talked about the players field. So every day, uh, Chess24, and uh, and the organizers of the champion chess tour are uh, announcing a new player. So this one was in order. So the latest to an be announced was today, Maxime Vachila Grave. Uh, so eleven have been announced. Five are still to go. But tell us, what are your first uh, your first feelings, first thoughts on the players that have been announced so far? 
my first thought is that I think they've all beaten me at some point in my career, <laughs> <laughs> which is depressing. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's extremely strong and players from all over the world. I mean, you've got Ding Lairon from China. You've got a few European players. Um, I mean, an American player, Wesley So. I mean, Vidit, India player. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, someone for everyone to root for, I think. Um, and yeah, I mean, all of them are fighting players. I can't imagine any quick draws coming up. And it's the perfect format as well to make chess really appeal as a sport, this rapid format. Ever since I was young, um, I mean, I love classical chess, uh, but these seven hour games, these long time controls, I can barely handle them as a player, let alone a fan. So <laughs> um, it's really exciting to see um, rapid chess kind of at the very, very top level. This is kind of what we dreamed of as well when we were all starting out, right? To, for chess to be a sport, for that recognition. And these players, they'll be smashing each other around trying to <laughs> trying to get those prizes yeah absolutely well first of all try and make it through the the qualifier round i also think it's great that we see a few new names like of course there's a lot of very established grandmasters uh in that list but someone like david anton is kind of i think making his debut at least as a regular uh on this level jan christoph duda He's, of course, you know, already in the world in the top 15. Um, he's famously taken the Magnus's, um, broken Magnus's unbeaten streak. Also, Vidic, we haven't quite seen himself, you know, prove himself at that level. Liam Le Quang uh, will also be in. Who of these, you know, more up and coming players we haven't seen at the top so much? Who are you most excited to see uh, out of that list? Yeah, I mean, probably Duda, just because I'm a huge fan of his chess. And I think out of everyone in the top 100 in the world, he's one of the ones I just can never guess his moves ever. <laughs> uh, so I just stopped trying to understand them. Um, but the, I mean, every game is there's kind of fire on the board uh, in a way. And David Anton, I mean, I think out of these players, you said, who aren't kind of regulars right at the very top, right in the elite. I think he's the one who fears his opponents the least. So mm -hmm. he could cause a uh, few upsets for sure. Um, it might be, it might come down to consistency with those guys. They might be able to win a few games, but to do it consistently when they haven't got maybe the same experience, that'll be tough, but, uh, yeah, it'll be exciting. Yeah, it will be exciting to see. I think regardless of what happens for them, it will be such a great, um, learning experience without wanting to belittle any of them. They are all, you know, such strong grandmasters, uh, but I think probably all very grateful for the opportunity. Um, speaking of Duda, just uh, since this is last chess week tonight, there is, of course, breaking news. Duda has just beaten, um, I don't know if you were watching this or if you caught any of it, but he has beaten Fabiano Cabrana in the Speed Chess Championships, which are uh, uh, the run on uh, chess.com. Just tonight, oh. just before the match ended, literally half an hour before we went live. But uh, Duda, yeah, beating Fab uh, Fabiano very convincingly. So for sure, at the faster time controls, uh, he will be a, a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, for sure. I think he, he's beaten players like Grishuk and Aronian in previous speed chess championships. So yeah, he could definitely spring a few surprises. If I had to back an underdog, I think he'd be the one. Yeah. Oh, I, I know what I'm going to be watching now before bed <laughs> later. I'm going to be re-watching the commentary <laughs> on this, uh, the Chess 24 commentary on this match. Sure. Um, yeah, so that's that's uh, that for now about the Champions Chess Tour starting next Sunday. Again, you can find all the information on the Chess24 uh, homepage, so check it out. And David, very much looking forward to, to following that with you. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Um, I literally can't wait. Just one week to go. It's, it feels real. It feels real. Uh, speaking of things that are going to happen uh, in the chess world next, so the Champions Chess Tour, of course, is the next uh, big one. But there's a couple that I have picked out uh, that are happening, let's say, in the coming months. And let's first talk about a place that I know you have been to so many times. We were commentating there together just earlier this year. It is Gibraltar. Gibraltar opened, sadly, had to be um, cancelled because of uh, the pandemic. But instead, they announced that they are going to be hosting the final stage of the Women's FIDE Grand Prix, which will be played in Gibraltar uh, in the end of January. So, David, your thoughts, your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great to hear. Um, I mean, I think we all miss over the board chess. And I'm very jealous of these ladies uh, being able to play. Um, and yeah, Gibraltar, of course, uh, is probably my favorite place in the world. Um, not just to play chess, but um, I've been there so many times and they, they're real kind of front runners. I mean, they support women's chess so much, but I mean, they just love chess itself. And every year at the festival, there's so many different events. It's, um, it's a pity we won't be able to experience that this year, but it's great that they're kind of going the extra mile and putting on an event when actually, I mean, um, they, would, they didn't need to. I mean, it's going to be so many hurdles to overcome, um, but they're still making that effort. And that's uh, fantastic for the world and fantastic for women's chess. Absolutely. Sure. So that's a, another event for those of you who didn't know. Uh, a big event to to look forward to, especially now, of course, with Queen's Gambit and all of this women's chess booming. It will be great to see the top the top ladies um, back in action. And uh, uh, sh shout out to Brian Callahan and Stuart <laughs> Conquest if you guys are watching. They they do so much uh, good work over there in Gibraltar. Absolutely. <laughs> shout out indeed. And um, this was not the only tournament to be announced. Just uh, three days ago. Uh, Fide and the Isle of Man, well, Fide came out with an official announcement saying Isle of Man will host the Fide Grand Swiss and Women's Grand Swiss 2021 with 164 players in total, combined prize fund of $550,000. The event is said to be the strongest and highest budgeted Swiss tournament ever registered in history. So David, I'm sure you had already seen that. I think news like that wouldn't escape. <laughs> your attention um you played in the the last grand swiss that was held in the isle of man 2018 i know i know <laughs> you're gonna make me cry live on stream fiona i'm gonna you're gonna see the um i love the isle of man as well they do such good work and i've loved every tournament um that i've played there but yeah the most heartbreaking moment of my career happened in the last round there last year um i kind of gambled in the final round and it didn't pay off, cost me a lot of money, but also, I mean, more importantly, it was uh, just so close to that dream of qualifying for the candidates. But yeah, I think there's two places, right, this year for the candidates and um, obviously bigger and better than ever. Um, and shout out to Alan Ormsby, who does a fantastic job Absolutely. over there as well. Absolutely, Alan Ormsby, the Scheinberg family. I don't think it has been announced yet uh, if it will be once again in partnership with chess.com, but it seems like of course, pandemic uh, permitting, the tournament will be played. It will return as well uh, to the, the Villa Marina. I don't know if you saw that, but the Villa Marina has been announced as the playing hall. And so the way it will work is the world's top 100 players will be invited uh, together with nine FIDE uh, nominees and five wildcards by the organizer and uh, those 114 players will be competing for a prize fund of 425,000 US dollars. Um, David, your wow. thoughts about this announcement and of course the two qualifying spots for the, the, the candidates. Yeah, firstly, my first thought is, wow, at the prize money. Um, my second thought is, I need to stop losing my rating points so that I still qualify in the top 100. <laughs> I actually <laughs> checked. <laughs> I actually checked before the show where you were in the world rankings. Yeah, I think um, actually after the Isle of Man last year, I think I was number 30-ish or just outside the, no, not number 30. Yeah, probably like somewhere between 30 and 40. Um, and I think two months later, I was like number 80, 90. So it was a, it was a slippery slope, that one. Uh, I dropped a lot of points in a lot and not much time. So um okay that's i mean f as a professional chess player that's uh, fantastic news and it gives me something to work towards if you guys see me in the gym ever it's because i've got that tournament in my mind i need revenge on wang hao <laughs> <laughs> we will be keeping an eye on your progress and uh, just to finish off the topic about the isle of man uh, apart from the grand swiss there will also be the, i think the first ever women's grand swiss with uh, 40, um, 40 players as well as, um, as seven nominees and three wild cards with 125,000 US dollars in prize money. So uh, two very, very exciting events uh, to look forward to um, coming up. And it's yeah. almost still a year to go, but uh, yeah, some big news there this week in the chess world and something for all of us 
to look forward to. David, before we get to the questions, uh, because time always goes by so quickly, one last thing I was going to ask you, you know, what's coming up, uh, what's coming up next for you? And I saw I was uh, stalking your Twitter account and I saw that you will be involved in the Pro Biz Cup, uh, which is a yearly side event of the London Chess Classic. The London Chess Classic also unfortunately had to be cancelled uh, because of the pandemic, but it looks like the Pro Biz Cup will still be played online or tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. I got an email just a couple of weeks ago, I think. Um, yeah, basically they're, I don't know how to say it, they're just pimping me out. Um, <laughs> so um, I'll be available as a partner. The The whole idea is that um, actually anyone can bid on a player and play with them as a, as a pairing, as a team. So it's alternate moves. And it's to raise money for uh, for charity for this chess in schools, which does a fantastic job um, all over the UK. I think uh, of putting chess into state schools and um, yeah, I I really enjoyed it in past years. You can see there in the photo in on the tweet. Uh, that's me with my partner from the last two years, uh, Raiko Vyatovich. Um, we even managed to beat Gary Kasparov a couple of years ago. It's probably the highlight of my career. Um, <laughs> Gary was not a happy bunny after that game. Um, yeah, it's it's real it's real fun, and I think anyone who is looking to play, I think there's going to be some very strong players. It's not just the top players in the UK who will be available as playing partners. I think there'll be some uh, great players. Uh, well, some of the world's top players will be available as well. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it'll be nice to play some chess. And I actually got a text from Raiko the other day saying he's going to bid on me. So I can't wait. I can't wait. Very nice. So if people want to compete with Raiko for the bidding, I think they can go to chessinschools.co.uk slash pro hyphen biz cup and, uh, and see who is up, who is up for grabs, who can you bid for. I know it's always a fun event. Um, so I shall be looking forward to this. Hopefully we'll be able to follow it online. David, before we get to your quick fire questions, tell me, do you have any other plans? I know you're going to be in Norway for a while, but do you have anything else lined up? Oh, good question. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess um, the, my next kind of uh, next couple of months are going to be here in Norway um, as part of the Champions Chess Tour. Um, I may... I'm not sure I'm allowed to reveal it. I do have something coming up in January. I'm not sure I'm allowed to reveal it quite yet. Um, but other than that, I yeah, I can't wait to get back to Over the Board Chess. I'll still be doing, um, I'll still be writing my newspaper column for the Times. I'll still be doing a bit of teaching. Um, my life is all chess these days. Can't remember how to do anything else. Uh, <laughs> I used to be obsessed with sport and uh, football and a few other things. And now, yeah, I've, uh, I think chess has taken over my life. But I'm enjoying it more than ever. And... Um, yeah, I think Christmas in Norway, that's that's what I'm looking forward to the most, Christmas in Norway. You played, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the last time you played over the board chess classical was in uh, Norway, uh, in Spain for the Spanish league. And right. um, other than that, I guess, like, like most people, there hasn't been too much over the board action. So how much have you been working on your chess and how do you keep up the motivation uh, to work on your chess when there aren't so many events? Yeah, I mean, it's difficult. Um, there are moments when I'm thinking, OK, actually, I can't even see my next tournament on the horizon, so why bother? But then there are moments when I think, oh, my God, I love this game. Um, let's just I can't wait to open up chess space and start analysing some, you know, fun blitz tricks to uh, pounce. Uh, to spring on my opponents. Um, I think I still study chess quite a bit, but uh, it's kind of, it's changed a lot. So nowadays a lot of tournaments are online and very short time controls. So I'm kind of looking, especially with openings, I'm looking for kind of trickier, more enjoyable positions to play. Whereas, you know me, Fiona, in classical games, I'm a very boring, I have a very boring style. I just want to swap off and go to an end game and sit there for seven hours. So um, the way I approach chess is slightly different, but um, for all of you out there, I mean, you all know it probably, if you enjoy the studying, if you make it fun, if it doesn't feel like work, then um, you get more done and it's more productive anyway. And if you're looking for tricks, especially in the Karukana's Black, make sure to check David, uh, <laughs> check out David's Blitz Games. Actually, I haven't had a chance to, to, to tell you yet, but since you mentioned that uh, last night I got you to play, so David was playing in the streamers battle for my team on Leeches, and I was, uh, I always 
look at different players throughout the tournament, but I saw your game exactly when you played Nordia back as black, when you beat him in 14 moves. So people, if you wanna, if you wanna see how to crush a, a strong GM in 13, 14 moves as black, make sure to check out David's games. Uh, very tricky, yeah. very tricky yeah, guy. I should... I shouldn't be revealing this live on stream with so many people watching, but uh, actually that exact trap, I think I've caught at least 20 grandmasters in it. So um, you guys should all go and study it so that I don't get any more cheap wins off, off people. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was the fruits of my many hours during lockdown when I had nothing else to do. <laughs> I thought I'd spring some traps. Yeah. David, the time has come for your quick fire questions before we run out of time. Bring it I, hope, on, I hope you haven't pre-prepared them all. <laughs> no, I, I, I plan to. You know how it is. Like, I plan to do my research, but I never never got the time. I'm excited by this. and I'm, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'll try not to say anything too inappropriate for the quick fire questions. <laughs> Under time pressure, my brain tends to uh, go a bit fuzzy. Okay, so we'll start with non-chess related questions and then we'll switch to the chess related ones. Okay, but still quick fire or yeah, still quick fire. We'll start off easy. Oh gosh. <laughs> well, what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie, um, Avengers Endgame. <laughs> your favorite uh, artist in a musical, um, favorite band or singer? Oh, uh, if Grohl from the Foo Fighters, yeah, the band and musician, yeah. And favorite song? Favorite, oh, Despacito. <laughs> I go through phases. It's either Despacito if I'm feeling, you know, a bit fruity, a bit uh, energetic, or it's Everlong by the Foo Fighters. Yeah. Both uh, good choices, different choices, but both good choices. <laughs> What's your favorite food? Um, uh, yeah, maybe it's just because I'm chatting with you, but probably pizza. <laughs> it's either that I or approve. my mom's sandwiches. <laughs> Oh, I miss my mom's sandwiches. <laughs> Favorite drink? Um, fruity side. Uh... <laughs> what? Oh no! Sorry, sherry, sherry. I'm an old man. <laughs> Glass of now sherry that every you're night. you're thirty. I know. What was your favorite subject in school? Um, French or German, just because the teachers were the best. Um, I didn't really. Yeah, me and schoolwork. It's love hate. <laughs> What's your favorite sport besides chess? Football, or playing, playing or watching. I don't. Know. Uh, okay. Because playing, playing is tennis. Watching is football. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, Sorry, too many. <laughs> What's the last book you've read? Ooh. Oh gosh, <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, uh, but it's one of the Bernard Cornwell books, probably. Um, uh, we're not counting chess books, right? No. no. <laughs> That'd okay. be too easy. One of the Bernard, Bernard Cornwell, one of his Saxon stories. Yeah. Question from uh, the chat from Eat Ships. I guess it's about the football. Who do you support? Um, I was brought that these days because, okay. Pre-Norway, I was living near Brighton, so Brighton and Hove, Albion. And you, did you say something? Because you broke up again, I guess you mentioned Man U or... Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I was brought up as a Man U fan, but these days Brighton and Hove, Albion, just because it's my local team. And I've, been to, I've seen them play a dozen times or so. Uh, if you could be an animal, what would you be? I... Uh, my favorite animal is a horse. I'm not sure I would want to be one though. <laughs> I wouldn't want some huge sweaty man like riding, <laughs> riding me. Um, don't know why I said that. <laughs> I'd probably be an owl because they're nocturnal and they look like they're pretty chill half the time. <laughs> okay, moving swiftly on. Which superpower would you like to have? <laughs> um, I'd like to read people's minds because then I'd be world chess champion. <laughs> Which uh, which era would you have liked to live in? Oh, sorry, say that again. I which which era would you have liked to live in? Oh, um, I would love to have lived 
thousand years ago, but I'd probably be killed quite quickly. Um, <laughs> I think now is okay. I mean, actually, probably a few, like maybe, okay, 60, 70, so that I could get on the property market. <laughs> that would help. Um, what is the strangest thing you have ever eaten? Oh, I'm very boring. Um, my own cooking looks like it's got a life of its own sometimes, so... Um, <laughs> I oh, I don't know. Um, nothing. You nothing get one weird, pass, actually. Okay, <laughs> pass, pass. <laughs> I, I wasted it. Say, now you have wasted it. Yeah. Which three people would you invite to dinner, dead or alive? Dead or alive. Um, uh, my granddad. No, <laughs> is that too boring? And, <laughs> That's fine. Uh, um, oh, and. Don't know, Bobby Fisher, because that would be interesting. I need more conspiracy theories in my life. <laughs> okay, uh, this one is easier, genuinely easier. Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram? Um, oh god, uh, until about six months ago, I would have said Facebook. Now, probably Instagram. Although, I, more people need to slide into my DMs. So. <laughs> Ladies, if you're watching, David is in Norway, he's single. <laughs> so, not and waiting for your messages. <laughs> um, no. Describe yourself in three words. Um, these are hard for you. Jeez. <laughs> um, a dreamer. Uh, <laughs> lazy and self-critical interesting um if you could teleport right now where would you go teleport right now um there's nowhere that's covid free is there so <laughs> um i don't know it would be nice to you know in harry potter where they can like apparate and disapparate they can just travel between places if I could just travel anywhere, I'd probably go home for a few days, hit, I'd hit up Singapore. I thought you would Gibraltar. say that, have a mom's sandwich. <laughs> no, no. I wouldn't mind Singapore a few hot days. It's pretty cold here, honestly. <laughs> sure. And uh, finally, what would you say is your best quality? Uh, I think we've done a Q&A before and I said a very inappropriate answer here. So my best quality is that I try and see the best in everyone. <laughs> is that too soppy? Can we end on a different note? <laughs> well, you still have the chess questions coming up, so you can make oh, okay. up for it. <laughs> so, see the best in everyone. <laughs> uh, but okay. that's very sweet. So, quick fire chess questions. Which opening will you never play? Um, the Dutch defense. <laughs> Sorry, Simon. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> Which chess player would you take with you on a desert island? Ooh, this is hard. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Gordon, my good mate. My good and man. who do you not want to be? Who do you? Who would you not want to be stranded with? Sorry, Nigel, but you know the answer to this. <laughs> um, Nigel Trot. Yeah. <laughs> um, one word that describes you as a player. Um, pragmatic. Your favorite time control, classical, rapid, blitz, or bullet? Uh, oh, okay, classical, long classical there. Old, old. <laughs> you love those seven, seven. I've seen you play plenty of seven, eight hour games. You love those. <laughs> I do, I do. I think, yeah, actually someone told me a while back, I have, like, I think, a ridiculous number of games over 100 moves. I think he found like 35, 40 games. Uh, <laughs> do you love those long games, those grinds? I don't, <laughs> but I know I know you do each to their own. Who's your favorite world champion? Um, I used to think I used to say Kasparov when I was young. Now probably Kar Karpov or Kramnik. I'm not sure. I'll say Karpov. Interesting. Yeah. What would you be if not a chess player? A foot, I, I wish a football manager. That, <laughs> like I, the number of hours I've spent on that game. If Adam Hunt, if you're still watching, yeah, a uh, football manager for sure. <laughs> and finally, I know it's your dream to have an opening named after you. So what mm. would you name that opening? 
the howitzer gambit. <laughs> it probably wouldn't be a gambit because I never sacrifice anything. Yeah, I was thinking. The howitzer the how defense. It, the howitzer system. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. David, on that note, um, I think we've had some interesting answers there. I think you've uh, widely managed, mostly managed to avoid any <laughs> <laughs> any slips of the tongue. Any slips of the tongue, um, David. It's been thank you so much for your your time. It's been fun. There's been some uh, very interesting parts there, and we should all make sure to watch David uh, when the Chess Champions Tour gets on the way next week. Best of luck with that. People, make sure to follow him on, uh, on Instagram and on Twitter. And yeah, David, it's been a pleasure. Enjoy, enjoy your time in Norway and best of luck with the tournament. Thank you, everyone. Uh, yeah, thank you, Fiona. Send my best wishes to Ingvar. I loved his YouTube videos on the <laughs> Queen's Gambit. Bye, everyone. We'll pass it on. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so that was uh, David Howell. And we are now going to bring on our second guest, uh, the one, the only, Mr. Zibit. So let's call him apologies about the, the Skype noises. <laughs> Mr. Zivit <laughs> Zivit Mr. 2020 style How does this internet work? Can I catch COVID? <laughs> I, uh, I think he should be safe <laughs> Have you been listening to David's uh, segment where he was talking about the conspiracy theories? Uh... I might have missed that part, but I saw most of it. <laughs> have you been getting into uh, some conspiracies? Regarding COVID? Yeah, being spread over Skype. No. <laughs> I, I heard something about it, so I, I just want to be safe. So. <laughs> safe and, an, uh, safe uh, and anonymous. <laughs> That's a very impressive beard you have been growing during these pandemic times. Yes. Yes, uh, actually, the barber shops were closed. I used to go. My, my sister is a barber, so she takes care of my beard. And I haven't been able to go recently, so. Well, I like it. I have to say, I like it. Tell us how are things? You are calling us from Reykjavik, Iceland. Yes, indeed. And are you actually? I did. I meant to ask you when we set up. Are you at home or that picture? So that picture behind you depicts, of course, the match. Uh, between Spassky and Fischer, which was played in Reykjavik 1972. Do you have that at uh, home, or are you in an I, I wish, I wish. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm at the uh, Icelandic Chess Federation. Okay, very interesting. So, yeah, of course, yeah. That's a pretty nice painting. It is very, very nice. Um, so tell us, how come you are at the, the offices of the Chess Federation, and tell us maybe a bit about what has been happening uh, which as in Iceland during these pandemic times? Yeah, uh, well, there hasn't been much chess. I, I think like the rest of the world, people are stuck to, uh, starting to use, you know, online tournaments a lot more. So we we have been, you know, conducting some, some online tournaments, which have gone well, but uh, hopefully we can, we can start soon. I think next week we can start again with like uh, uh, maybe youth tournaments. So I teach two times a week, like little kids. And uh, I've been doing that on Skype. So hopefully we can, we can, uh, we can start doing, you know, some sessions again at the chess club. But, uh, you know, the pandemic is, is going down a bit again. Uh, we, ha we had a spike, so we had to shut things down, but uh, it's going in, in a very good direction, it seems. That is, of course, excellent news, because one of the reasons um, I brought you on Today, apart from you being an all-round legend, a great friend, one of the reasons is that at Reykjavik Open, which unfortunately had to be cancelled this year in 2021, has just been announced a couple of days ago yes. uh, that this year it will not only be Reykjavik Open, well, 
fingers crossed, uh, but it will be the European Individual Championship will be part of the Reykjavik Open Chess Festival. April right. is the working date, but given the pandemic, further information will be provided at the start of the 2021 calendar year. So since I know that you are part of the organizing committee and of the organizing team, I thought, let me get Ingvar on the show and see if he can tell us a little bit more, see if we can get some insider scoops. Yeah, so, uh, well, it's only a working date, obviously, because, I mean, like everything in the world right now, it's hard to predict what will happen. But, uh, I mean, we're optimistic, at least in Iceland, with the way things are going right now. Like yesterday, we had only three uh, reported uh, COVID cases. So it's going way down. And hopefully, uh, it should just, you know, uh, we, hopefully we eliminate it soon. So yeah, the plan is is to hold the tournament in April. Uh, I mean, a lot of things can happen, but but we're optimistic. It's going to be uh, like you said, the European Individual Championship. So held by ECU, of course. Uh, and then uh, we are also planning to uh, have uh, an open tournament for others. So obviously this uh, excludes uh, people from the United States and India and such. So, uh, which are usually have... big, yeah. big groups of players uh, at the Reykjavik Open. So I was wondering, so does that mean there will be two separate tournaments going on at the same time? Yeah, that's the plan. But the other one will be a, a, a shorter one, okay. like a seven, seven round tournament or something like that. Okay, so because the uh, European is uh, quite a series. I saw it's like yeah. a two week, two week event, 11 rounds, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so uh, so yeah, so Reykjavik Open, fingers crossed, I guess we will find out more in January, is that correct? Yeah, so the plan is hopefully to, to have further information uh, at the start of the new year. I mean, if things go the way they're going right now in Iceland, it, 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 hopefully we can, we can keep the dates. But I mean, if we have to push it back, that's what's going to happen. But we're optimistic right now that uh, uh, <laughs> we can go along. Well, yeah. the tournament. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. It is my favorite, my favorite uh, event on the tour. I actually forgot to to update, but one of the reasons that Reykjavik Open is such a fantastic tournament, apart from uh, Iceland, you know, being just such a beautiful, beautiful country, the great organizers. And there's so many for if you haven't played Reykjavik Open, it has so many great side events and probably the best side event uh, is the pub quiz, which uh, Ingvar has been in charge of for the last how many years? Five, uh, four, five oof, years? Good question. Uh, at least five, probably like six, seven. Six, seven years. Uh, it yeah. is, I think, widely regarded as the best chess quiz anywhere in the world. I mean, the questions you come up with every year, I don't know where you find them, uh, but it's such a fantastic yeah. event. I'm actually curious, is there anyone with us in the chat anywhere uh, that has played the Reykjavik Open before and has taken part in the, in the chess uh, pub quiz? Because it's such a great event and it has been won before by none other uh, then Magnus Carlsen, the reigning world champion, he won the pop quiz. This photo was taken in 2015. And uh, I think you were the, the quiz master. I actually, yes. I took that photo. I was there sort of reporting and, uh, and doing all that stuff. And I mean, the knowledge that he had was simply, simply astonishing. Yeah, uh, it also impressed. I remember Ian Rogers, he was at this tournament. And he, uh, he wrote about how impressive Magnus' knowledge was about some positions and stuff that, uh, that I asked about. And he thought for some reason that he shouldn't, shouldn't or wouldn't know about, but obviously he did. Yeah, I mean, I was so impressed his his uh, knowledge on even the obscurest things and some historical stuff. I mean, was very, very impressive. I'll show you guys one more photo from the the pub. Quiz. This one was taken uh, just last year, uh, 20, 2019, so you can see uh, it's always, it's such a fun gathering and I, I cannot say it enough. 
if you have never played Reykjavik Open, you want to play a great tournament, uh, go and check it out. And yeah, simply some fantastic, yeah. fantastic side events. I don't, I don't want to say it was a pity, but uh, the people that won in 2019, uh, they were Icelandic. And, and they got uh, the price they got was actually intended for foreigners because it was uh, a trophy made out of lava. Sort of like, a, you know, so you can remember Iceland by something that's, uh, you know, typical for Iceland. But unfortunately, <laughs> it was won by an Icelander for the first time in a while. <laughs> but they, they won it deservedly. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, remember. I mean, he's, he's been playing every year, uh, this guy <laughs> and, uh, and his teammates is pretty good as well. Have you already, how do, how do you do this, uh, the, the questions for the quiz? Have you already thought of some questions uh, for the potential 2021 edition? Uh, yes, I usually, uh, I just start uh, immediately after, after, the, uh, uh, after the tournament. So I, I just make a document and if, if I think of something funny or, or something that would be cool to ask about, I, uh, I, uh, I immediately just make a question and so I built it up Incredible. over the course of a year. That's some serious work right there. So fingers crossed we will be able to to come uh, to Reykjavik and uh, and enjoy the tournament and all the, the side events it has to offer. Ingvar, next up, I wanted to talk since sometimes I get sidetracked, but this is last chess week tonight <laughs> where we talk yeah. about what has been happening in the chess world. So one of the, the news this week was that actually uh, Nigel Short together with Malcolm Payne have uh, done a, a motion, um, sent in a motion to FIDE uh, to uh, take action against the fact that Iran players are sort of banning their, their players to face um, opponents from Israel. Israel. You can once again yeah. read the whole, the whole story on chess. 24. Ingvar, you are the captain as well as being involved in the Reykjavik Open and being a YouTuber and all that. You also did the captain of the Icelandic team. Uh, you yes. were the captain this year at the online Olympiad and the past Olympiad over the board. Um, have you had any experience with this? Maybe has something happened uh, with Iranian players at the Reykjavik Open before and what are, what are your thoughts on, on the issue? Yeah, I haven't seen like uh, any players like at the Reykjavik Open. I don't think we've ever had a player from Iran or, or and Israel get paired up. And I'm sure we would have we would do something to avoid that. But mm. uh, then again, I don't think it should be uh, something that organizers have to do to to fix pairings because of something like this, some political pressure. I did notice at one Olympiad that. Uh, I think it was Iraq. They were supposed to play against Israel, but they changed that pairing to something else. That's one thing I've noticed at, at an Olympiad. So uh, it's not only Iran that uh, has this issue, but I think it's very unfortunate. And you see that he started playing under the flag of, of Fide, right? Of course. So uh, the photo here of the, the tweet by Leon Watson is, of course, none other than Ali Reza Firuja, who left. Uh, Iran, I think a couple of years ago at this stage and has moved to France and I think I read recently that he has started the process of getting a French nationality and I guess we will see him playing under the French flag in the future which is a great shame uh, for Iran. Uh, they have also recently lost one of their top uh, top arbiters, uh, Shaira Borat. Um, yeah. did, uh, so it's just, it's a huge, I mean, I don't want to dwell on this topic because I understand it's such a complex, yeah. it's such a complex matter. And in general, I agree with, with people, you know, who say don't bring politics into it, but it goes so, so far beyond that. And I think the, the biggest shame is that at the end of the day, those who get published are punished are the players because so Nigel just tweeted, uh, I think yesterday saying, according to my Iranian sources, if granted real freedom of choice, all bar a tiny handful of the country's leading chess players would willingly compete against the Israelis. We are one family. Uh, so yeah, and I mean, sumus. absolutely. So I really hope that uh, going forward, um, that they will be able that uh, 
a solution will be found because, and this is not just a problem that that uh, is to chess. So basically, I read up, I saw that uh, Iran has forbidden its athletes from competing against Israelis at international sports events since 1983. Um, but it is only now that the chess world is actually too too threatening threatening to mm-hmm. do something about it, and actually we will be we will be hearing more about this in a few weeks. On December the sixth, uh, the FIDE General Assembly will take place, and they will debate uh, debate the motion. And by, by the way, do you know from where the the photo of Ali Reza is? <laughs> I was going to say that it's from Reykjavik Open Air. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I even know where, you know exactly where. I know exactly where on the stage. At the time, yeah. it looks like he was still playing for Iran. Yeah, that's an Iranian flag yes. there on his name tag. Uh, he came very close. He was doing very well in the tournament, then lost a crucial game. And he is, of course, playing in the beautiful Harpa, Harpa uh, concert hall. So one more reason to be going to to Reykjavik Open, but yeah, one of the, the big chess uh, stories of the week. And as I said, we will find out more in December where potentially Iran uh, could just be um, could just be banned from FIDE, uh, which would be a huge loss um, as they have so many up and coming players, so many talented young players. And yeah. it would be a pity. Arham to- and uh, Aman, Tabatabai. Exactly. So many, so many strong players. Exactly. So fingers crossed uh, there will be a resolution. But as I said, so hard to discuss this on a show like this one because it's just an incredibly complex topic. Let's talk about some um, some happier news. And I've it looks like I've forgotten to to upload the tweet. So let me just add that now. Some happier chess news. Uh, also politics. Also politics <coughs> related. <coughs> I thought we were staying away from politics. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> what happened to all my promises. But this one is happy news. It's great news for the chess world. Um, just this week, uh, uh, Victoria Schmilite Nielsen, uh, a grandmaster in her own right, wife to Peter Heine Nielsen, uh, was elected the new speaker of the Lithuanian parliament. So congratulations to her. She will be... Uh, I don't know what exactly uh, it means, but I think she will be sort of leading the parliament and she has been away from the chess world for a bit, um, not as active, but great to see her pursuing such a successful uh, political yeah. career. Fantastic. And Ingra, I wanted to ask you, because interestingly enough, um, she's not the only, uh, by far not the only woman chess player who has made it far uh, in in politics, there is also, of course, woman uh, woman grandmaster Dana Rejnitsha Ozola, who is, I believe, the minister of economics of um, in, uh, Latvia. In Latvia, yeah. and then I wanted to bring up your very own uh, Lilia Greta's daughter, who yes. I remember playing her or playing very near her at the Olympiads. She was a, but well, she still is a woman. I am, and uh, and. Tell us a bit about, you know, how have chess and politics um, interweaved in, in Iceland? Uh, yeah, she, so she was actually, uh, she's a multiple Icelandic champion, women's champion. Uh, and she was actually uh, uh, a member of the parliament in Iceland. So that's, uh, of course, a you know, pretty big position. I would also like to mention that, uh, you know, Frederik Orlason, of course. Of course, yeah. He was uh, sort of, I don't know how to say it in English, probably like the director of the offices of the parliament in Iceland. A, a very respectable position as well. Not like he was not, uh, he was not uh, in the parliament, but uh, a very respectable position. And he was there for many, many years. And, and because of that, uh, I mean, chess has always had uh, in Iceland, you know, sort of, you know, friends of chess in the parliament. So, you know, it's better to get uh, sponsorship and stuff. Well, I that. think I think one of the reasons I think some like you know trivia facts, uh, trivia chess facts that a lot of people know about Iceland. I don't know if it is still the case, but you for the longest time you had 
the most grandmasters per capita. Yeah. I think maybe lately I read something about Monaco, but now I'm not I'm yeah, not I think, sure. Uh, I saw somewhere Monaco and maybe uh, Andorra. Yeah, but Andorra Might hasn't be. gained a new grandmaster, have they? No, they had uh, some some somebody. <laughs> the <laughs> long name oh Tel Aviv, no, not Tel Aviv, yeah, something. Del <laughs> Del Rio Angeles or something. Ah, he switched to Andorra. I think so. I I'm, did I'm not, not sure. know this. Okay, I saw but... this somewhere as well. Yeah, so we're I think the third now. You're the third now, but you were number one for the longest time. You just need to, you yourself should become a grandmaster, a few more friends, <laughs> and the problem will be taken care of. I'll, I'll start with an I am. Uh, yeah. uh, I think that's my ceiling, but we have some guys like Gummi and, and, and Gummi Kartanson and maybe Björn Thorfinn, so who can maybe reach GM. Yeah, Rick. for sure. I mean, for sure you have plenty. So that was the one uh, claim to fame in terms of chess. Trivia. And the second, of course, is that Iceland is one of the few countries, well, of course, the match <laughs> is, I think, number one. But uh, in terms that what people might, what not everyone might know is that actually grandmasters in Iceland uh, are paid a salary. Yes, but only, only uh, the active ones. You have to be active. And I mean, I guess that was a direct consequence of, of the match or... Yeah, I would say so. I mean, of course, like Frederik Olason, he was uh, a trailblazer because uh, he had a great, some great successes. He uh, reached uh, the candidates. Uh, he beat a lot of world champions like Karpov, Petrosia, and Tal. A number of times he beat Fischer. So I think because of him, uh, chess became popular in Iceland. And then, then we had this match in 72. And following that, we got uh, a very strong team of grandmasters which we called like the, the fantastic four in Iceland <laughs> <laughs> and they had some great results in uh, Olympiads between like 86 and 90 fifth and sixth place which is just fantastic something that well we haven't reached since and mm. maybe we'll never will again but those were the golden years of course for the Iceland golden chess. years of, yeah. of Icelandic chess let's talk about the golden age of uh, of uh, the Queen's Gambit oh yes <laughs> Love that show, by the way. I'm going to have to. I mean, every every single week, I think, since I've been doing since the inception of this show, I've been talking about the Queen's Gambit. So I will yeah. stop soon. But the hype is just not dying down. Like every week, I think, okay, it's gonna take a back seat, but no. And so I wanted to talk to you uh, about the show because you have actually done something uh, very interesting. You have your own YouTube channel, which people yes. can subscribe to you they can find you at uh, Zivit and so this is your tweet when you you did the final episode um, and basically what you did you took all seven episodes mm -hmm. and you went through all the different chess games and positions that were used in the series is that correct that's correct so all the positions I could I could find some of them were really difficult because they were only like part of the possession was that shows you that you know the detail that that they had. Uh, I only saw like parts of position, so I would you know put it in a database like only rook and f8, blah blah. blah. The night over there, <laughs> then I would find the game, and it was like yes, found it. <laughs> so you did. So, I was actually curious. You did all that work yourself. You didn't try yeah. to read up and see. Oh, is, has someone already done that work for me? So you you tried to reconstruct some of the positions. I and tried games. to re reconstruct them, but later I saw that uh, uh, there's a very nice YouTube YouTube uh, sorry uh, Twitter channel Olympi Urkan, mm -hmm. like like chess history and stuff. He found some games, so I, I saw that he had you know sort of. For the first few episodes, he had, of course, found found the same things that I did. But uh, I think I found a lot of things that people hadn't found, and I was very happy in one of the episodes when I found an old game of uh, Frederik Olsson where he played against Tal. Which episode was that? I think it was episode six. Yeah, six. When they were playing Blitz, she was playing uh, Blitz Simon against the guys. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. And how many? I actually, I actually called Frederik and told him about it. <laughs> It was like, hi, hey, Frederick. Uh, I don't know if you heard about this show. It's called Queen's Gambit. <laughs> what did he? What did he say to that? Oh, uh, he was very happy, and uh, he said, oh, "Okay, it's you know, it's nice that uh, I'm still being remembered." Uh, I think uh, I think he was very happy. 
That's so great. I mean, yeah. it's really, I think the, the show has spread uh, to sh spread joy to so many different people. I mean, when I see, even I have received so many messages of other people like, oh yeah, I watched this show, made me think of you, you know, like non-chess players. Yeah. Um, and really, I think it's really great to, to see this boom. And I think you also experienced it on your YouTube channel. Um, yeah. What have you, I saw that a few people have seen an, an increase, for example, in women viewers. Uh, I guess you had increased, uh, well, I don't know, you tell me, but increased views yeah. for those videos. Yeah, so how, how did you experience the boom as a chess content creator? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll start by <laughs> with a funny, uh, a funny story. Before I came, uh, I came here, I, I went out for some food. Got some chicken wings from my guy, <laughs> favorite guy. He's American. He make, makes chick, chicken wings here in Iceland. And he knows I'm a chess player. Uh -huh. I, know, I know him through basketball. He's a former basketball player in Iceland. So he uh, married an Icelandic woman. So he lives in Iceland and opened a business. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're good friends. And he's like, oh, Ink, what are you doing? And, hey, do you know? I was watching this show, The Queen's Gambit. It's great. <laughs> because he knows I'm, into, you know, uh, I'm a lot into chess. So uh -huh. he, he was just talking about it with me earlier today. So... Funny that. <laughs> yeah. It's really funny how everyone is jumping on yeah. the, the bandwagon. And it actually, I pulled up, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Tari, uh, Tarie, shout out if he's watching us. Ah, he's Tarie, Yes, absolutely. Uh, he, I don't know if he created this or if he found it somewhere, but look at this. It's a map of the world and it shows you in which countries. Um, is the queen's gambit number one on netflix uh, and it's a lot of countries and i think just before we went live earlier tonight uh, he updated this saying it has now also gone to number one in brazil and in venezuela so that's two more countries where it's number one and it's just simply astonishing uh, yeah maybe, maybe a little bit more about iceland because uh, like we have a facebook group for icelandic chess players we've seen a, a big jump there and, and people, new players, uh, people coming into the group. Started to get, uh, for the Icelandic news site, we started to get messages, you know, where can we buy chess sets, mm -hmm. <laughs> stuff like this. <laughs> and uh, last, uh, well, uh, on Friday, we have mm -hmm. a big talk show here in Iceland on, on the main channel. And they actually had uh, a segment about chess, like Queen's Gambit and chess. And they interviewed, uh, you know, Pierre Thorson, of course, they interviewed yeah. him and, and Lenka, the current uh, uh, female Icelandic champion and then they talked to a guy called Simon Rock who was uh, the uh, the bodyguard or, or, or the assistant of, of Fisher oh, during the match nice. yeah so it was a very nice segment so we, we, we're definitely feeling like the effects of, of the show here in Iceland so and all over the world <laughs> as you can you know yeah, I'm very curious. I mean, I'm repeating myself, so we'll move on the, to the quick by set questions in a second. But I'm really curious to see, you know, right now, I mean, we all see and feel the boom, but I'm, I'm very curious to see the long term, you know, yeah. the long term effects, because I think in a few months from now, people will not be talking about how great was the Queen's Gambit any longer i mean some might but it will not be this constant thing unless they come out with a with a second um, a second season but i think that's doubtful um but i'm curious will we still feel the effects you know will we feel there is new players there's a lot of new players there's a lot of new interest a lot of new women players so i'm, I'm curious curious yeah. to see how it plays out mr ingvar i hope Yo. you I guess you did listen to, to the... David. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I did. I hope you at least didn't make any notes. <laughs> so, uh, oh, you're giving me the same stuff? Yes, I'm afraid so. But I'll mix up the order to confuse you. <laughs> oh. Okay, so I'm not touching anything, so I'm not looking at any notes, so I'll, okay. I'll just answer. <laughs> I thought you were going to put your mask on your eyes. <laughs> oh, I could do that also if you... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's so let's go. First stop, um, well, you get one pass as well. One pass. One pass, okay. you get. Okay. And we'll start with the non chess questions. So and it has to be a quick, quick answer. First thing that comes to mind. First thing that comes to mind. If okay. you could be an animal, what would it be? Dog. 
Uh, which superpower would you like to have? Um, invisibility. Which era would you have liked to live in? Um, well, I would like to have been older in like the 80s or 90s, but let's say um, like uh, the 1950s. 1950s, interesting. Um, which, uh, what is the strangest thing you have eaten? Uh, a sheep's hat. <laughs> same answer as Simon a few weeks ago. I know, it's probably from the same <laughs> sitting. <laughs> Uh, which three people would you invite to dinner, dead or alive? Um, Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I would go for some chess player like uh, I think Spassky would be fun. Mm-hmm. And this is tough. And let's go Aliachin. <laughs> that would be an interesting dinner. Yeah. <laughs> um, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram? Ah, uh, Facebook. Uh, if you could teleport, where would you go right now? Right now. Ooh. I'll pass. I know. No clue what I would do. <laughs> Maybe it was not a good pass to use. Yeah, it was not a good pass at all. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Describe yourself in three words. Um, um, lazy, <laughs> outgoing, mm-hmm. uh, hot-tempered. <laughs> what is your favorite movie? Uh, Office Space. Your favorite artist, music, so band or singer? I'll go, I'll go with uh, the Icelandic Sigurós. Do you know it? Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> Your favorite song? It's called Sepp Kengler. By Sigurós? Yeah, you could, it so, sort of translates to like sleepwalkers. We should all check it out. Very, very, ni- very nice song, very good. Uh, your favorite food? Chicken wings. <laughs> Seriously? Had yeah, I had them before the show. I'm not, I'm not kidding. <laughs> your favorite drink? Fiona. <laughs> you know. It's a four letter word. It starts with a B. It has two E's and an R at the end. <laughs> <laughs> You're a simple man. A man of simple I'm a simple tastes. man. <laughs> Followed closely by the Icelandic water. Okay. Uh, Which is a uh, what's it called again? Oh, just Icelandic water in general. We drink from the tap. Ah, you meant I thought you yeah. meant the liquor. <laughs> ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> just Icelandic <laughs> water. <laughs> Come on, Jonas. <laughs> I like my beer, but. <laughs> what was your favorite subject in school? Uh, math. Math mm, and mathy boy. What's yes. your favorite sport besides chess? Basketball, by far. I'm a basketball referee. Over yeah. Four, 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 400 games. You're also like a great you, look, goalkeeper, actually. Yes, when I'm not uh, exposing my behind on Norwegian <laughs> newspapers. What happened there? No, I, we were playing at the European Championship in, in Crete. And I was trying to defend the goal, which was scored by a Norwegian girl. And uh, the photo is Lok van Veli, like broken the Norwegian, Norwegian girl running back and me lying on my behind with my butt in my uh, up in the ass up in the air and that's the photo of me in the Norwegian newspaper it doesn't do you justice I can vouch uh, no, for I know I made some nice saves you know I thought that was the best player on the team <laughs> what is the last book you have read oh I only read chess books to be honest so, okay, you, I'll give you a half pass since you have taken a, a silly pass. What is uh, the yeah. last chess book you have read? Okay, 1000 <laughs> Miniatures by Irving Tjernev. Something like that. Recommended? Uh, not really. It's an old book. Uh, it has descriptive notation, which a lot of people don't know. The thing that they used in the, in the, in the Queen's Gambit. So, 
I'm not going to recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> what is your best quality? It's a good question. Uh, I think uh, in real life, I, I tend to get along with people. Mm -hmm. I can vouch for that. And finally, what is your greatest achievement, either on or off the chessboard? Um, I think. Uh, well, I have some. I have been. I have been Icelandic nice champion in in, in uh, uh, team chess, but uh, I think I managed to get third place once in the uh, Icelandic nice championship. But I also like uh, I got the, the second place in the Icelandic Bit Championship, and I think that's that's a better accomplishment. Very nice. So I'll go with that. Very nice. So let's uh, switch to the to the the chess questions, and okay. we'll start with which opening will you never play? Never say never. <laughs> never say never. But uh, I've never been fond of. Uh, I've sort of never, never been fond of the, the Queen's Gambit declined for black. But I'm never going to say never. And probably I've played it, so I don't know. There's nothing you I've, wouldn't I've, play. Yeah? I've almost I've almost played everything, I think. So I'm, I'm just trying. Ah, I know. I know. Uh, the Perch defense. The I would perch. not play that. Interesting. Why not? That. I just don't like it. <laughs> I've played the Modern, but I never played the Perch. So I think we will uh, we'll stick to that one because it's true. Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, which chess player would you take with you on a desert island? Uh, Ginger GM, Simon Williams. <laughs> and who would you not want to be stranded with? Uh, let's go with... Uh, I'll, I'll support my friend Simon. I'll, I'll go with Ben Feingold. <laughs> I think I would get tired of the jokes you know, after a while, so that was the same jokes. Never play a three, never play a three. Moving on, one, one word that describes you as a chess player. Uh, I think, uh, okay, if, if I had to choose one quickly, it would be solid. Solid! <laughs> Your favorite time control? Uh, well, it's tricky. I mean, uh, everybody loves classical chess to, to an extent, but I, I, I'd have to go with Blitz, I think. That's interesting. And your favorite world champion? I have a few, but uh, I, I think I think Magnus. Uh, and last two questions. What would you be if not a chess player? Uh, hopefully... Um, a basketball coach or something like that. Interesting. Tonight was a very sporty night. David wanted yeah. to be a football manager. Yeah, I heard, I heard. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And finally, this one, I'm curious if you have given it some thought. Uh, if you invented an opening, what would you name it? Uh, I did think about it briefly earlier, and I'm not going to lie. But I, I didn't really find a good name. It would probably be... Uh, um, the bar escape. It would be a it, it would be a gambit that's so bad that either you win in, in, in twelve moves or you lose in twelve moves, so you can go to the bar. <laughs> How's that? That's a very good. I like that answer. That's an answer I can get behind. Very <laughs> yeah, inventive. Yeah, yeah. Also, somewhat. I mean, most of people they want to name it after themselves in a way or not, but this one, it's a great find. Ingvar, <laughs> we yeah. are. We are almost uh, at the end of this show. One final question for you, and thank you already for your time. Um, tell us what's coming up next for you, chess wise. Uh, it's a good question. Good question. Well, uh, at the end of last year, I wanted to start to play more to try to uh, finish my last uh, international master norm. So I went to the European Club Cup. And I played the tournament in January, but then, of course, things went south pretty fast. So I don't know. I, 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 these days, it, it's mostly coaching and, and uh, stuff like that. So I think, you know, 
mostly coaching uh, is on the agenda, and at least until 2021. <laughs> What about, uh, I see that, for example, Arco Ditto on the Twitch chat has said, thanks, Sivit, enjoyed listening to you. Uh, you are a Twitch streamer as well, but you've been more active lately on your YouTube channel. So can we expect yeah. a return to the Twitch? Stream? Yes, I, pr I promise a return in, in November. So. And we have to do a we have to do a quiz show show as well Absolutely. on your channel. Absolutely, I know it's been a, a long time coming, so we will do that. Um, so your YouTube is Zibit, and if people want to follow you on Twitch, I believe it's Zibit sixty four. Yeah, because Zibit wasn't available for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Who would steal that of you? I don't How know. Good day. Maripant is in the chat. She's uh, been waiting for the quiz for yeah. two months. We will we make it we happen. Stood her up. We stood her up last month. <laughs> we have to fix it. We have to make it right. We will fix it. Uh, Ingvar, thank you so very much for your time. It's been a lot of fun. No, it was a lot of fun. Hopefully, we'll see you. Hopefully, we'll see you at the latest. Um, at the latest for the Reykjavik Open. And before that, on Twitch, make sure to give him a follow. Check out his uh, review of the Queen's Gambit um, chess segments. And yeah, thank you so much uh, for joining me, Ingvar. Thanks for having me, Fiona. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so that was uh, Fide Master Ingvar Thor Johannesson. Before that, David Howell, thank you guys so much for watching. Before I let you go, this show is, of course, powered by coaches.com, uh, where currently you can get uh, online masterclasses at a 50% discount. So make sure to visit coaches.com uh, to find out more. The next masterclass is two days from now on Tuesday. Uh, masterclass is currently offered by Jesse February, Kostya Kavutsky and Haluka Skercia. But there will be more authors coming uh, in the future, being announced very soon. So make sure to keep an eye on coaches.com. Thank you so much uh, to everyone who watched tonight. Thank you for your comments. And I will see you next week. For now, uh, have a lovely rest of your Sundays and a good week ahead. Take good care. Bye bye.